Hey guys, Postron here. And today let's talk about how to level a Ranger in particular for my Toxic Rain Ballista Kickstarter. Now we did some testing today on stream of on twitch.tv slash palstron. And uh, we have now made some notes for the POB. I will also add this one to the main POB. So definitely update the new one to this right here. I will link it down in the description as well as that. This is actually a new POB. I just made a POB for leveling uh, on its own. I put some items in here that we're going to talk about. And I also made some skill configurations. Now, thank you to Tai Tai Killer for basically figuring out how to level this. If you guys don't know, he does our leveling guides over on maxroll.gg. Now, one thing I have to mention is that leveling will change quite a bit this patch uh, with stuff like mana forged arrows and momentum getting introduced and onslaught support not being there anymore early. And GG has not given us any numbers on how good or bad they are. So I can't really use them in this POV. So if you figure out like during leveling, they're really good, then you can also replace something in here. What I have done is though, faster attacks is now actually a level eight gem. You can get it at level eight, which means a lot of your attacks will feel a lot better. Uh, just so you're not surprised, POV is right now not updated. It still says 18, but it is eight. But all right, let's get into it. The first 12 levels, you don't have access to Toxic Rain. So what you're going to do instead is you're going to use Caustic Arrow paired with a Shrapnel Ballista and Puncture. Your playstyle will basically be, you just pop down your Ballistas, you shoot a Caustic Arrow here or there, and you also have a Mirage Archer equipped, which is going to shoot for you. Puncture is basically just there for bossing. Um, it's really good single target damage. It especially helps out at Brutus. Uh, and then we have two movement skills. We have Withering Step. Now, this one you want to put on left click. If you do not put it on left click, it's going to be annoying. It's another button to press. It is an instant skill, so it's going to automatically activate. Uh, this gives you elusive, which is a little bit of movement speed in between. But the big thing here is it gives enemies wither debuffs. So playstyle in general will be you have your caustic arrow, and then you also put down your shrapnel ballistas. You can have up to three of these ballistas down. Really important, I guess, is that if you are start for strength and intelligence, definitely take primal spirit first here if you feel like you need damage aspect of the eagle and heart of oak but after level 12 you should have all of them so with level 12 finished next up we go into the toxic rain at level 12 you get toxic rain and you don't just want one you want two uh, one is going to be your self-cast setup and one is going to be your ballista setup now, i put up to six links here these are obviously not ticked um these would be your first three links and then efficacy would be the fourth link just in case you find a five or six link i put these here as well uh, same with the ballista setup. The ballista setup is basically just different in terms of uh, the self-cast setup has a mirage archer and this one here has ballista totem support and you will be dealing damage with both. Uh, withering step, blink arrow is the same and then at level 16 you will take summon skitter bots. Purity of elements is for later but summon skitter bots is going to be a huge damage increase at level 16. Also in act 2 you want to get frenzy and then to make it a little bit more comfy lesser multiple projectiles Whenever you activate this, you get Frenzy Charges, which is a lot of extra damage. Uh, as for the passive tree, you can click down here right up to Act 2. The first thing we want to path towards is Avatar of the Hunt. Not just because it's a great node, but also for the travel points here. They give you phasing on kill, good attack speed, and then you take the 20% increased AoE node uh, while wielding a bow. This is going to be extremely comfy and going to give you better clear. And right after that, you want to rush down and get Graceful Assault. This gives you Onslaught, so it makes you faster and gives you extra damage. Really important to note here, there's a new mastery that says, immune to bleeding if equipped helmet has higher armor than evasion rating. So make sure that your helmet has armor, remind yourself whenever you pick this, and you don't change it, because then you're going to be bleed immune, which is especially nice against Dominus, and then against some of these pesky mobs in Act 4. As for items, the only thing you gotta have at this point is a short bow. Now, a short bow is basically just important because it has 1.5 attack speed without anything else. Now, if you can get attack speed on here, that's great, but that's going to be pretty random, right? Whenever you get one, you unid it. Uh, the only important thing is that your base bow has 1.5 attack speed. Almost none of the other mods scale Toxic Rain. None of the damage mods do. Um, you just damage over time or plus two levels do but that is really hard to get. Realistically, you're at most going to get attack speed. You can also throw random essences on just to try to hit it because it makes it rare. Uh, obviously, if you find a Quill Rain, you won the game, but these are usually quite expensive on day one. And then let's change from Act 2 to Act 3, see what happened. First up, we went to Farsight to get some extra damage. Blink Arrow cooldown recovery rate is going to make it a lot more cozy. 
And then what we're trying to accomplish is we path through quick step and intuition because we want to eventually get to watchtowers. As for skill gems, the only thing that happens is at level 24, you get purity of elements. Now, if you want to use haste, if you don't care about dying, you might be dying if you do haste, but you're going to be faster. Or if you're somebody who is good at changing gear, right? Uh, looking at resistances, then uh, something like Grace or Haste is going to be better. Grace is really good defensively. But for somebody who doesn't uh, want to have too much maintenance, Purity of Elements is really, really premium. It makes you freeze immune, makes you chill immune, so you don't really get slowed at all, and you get some all res. And then you will replace Skitterbot, so you can't run both. You don't have the mana for it, so don't even try. It's going to be really annoying. The second big part here is Despair. This gives enemies minus two chaos resistances. Uh, put this on whatever beefy enemy you find. After this, you're going to do the library quest, the fixture of fate side quest, uh, which basically unlocks you the gem vendor. And there you're going to buy two efficacies and a malevolence. Now, if you want a lot of damage, if you're starving for damage, put on malevolence instead of purity. If you want to keep the defenses, then keep purity. That is completely up to you. The efficacy will only get important once you have a four link for both your toxic grain and um, your toxic grain ballista. And after that, funnily enough, that's basically it for gems. There's obviously some other stuff you can look in the main Build guide, you can have a cast with damage taken set up, but you're usually gem starved during the campaign, so I didn't want to put more into this. This is basically the essential stuff. As for act progression, though, let's go through that as well. So we path through here, and then act four. The first really important one is you want to get nature's reprisal as soon as possible. This will, no joke, double your damage. If you come to my stream and complain about no damage and you forgot to take nature's reprisal, Oh boy, this is an absolute banger. Get it as soon as possible. Do your first lap, right? And then get Watchtowers. Also, don't forget to pick up the Life Monster here. It's incredibly strong early because you don't really have much flat life because you don't have many levels. So after we do that from Act 4 to Act 5, now we're trying to go upwards towards exceptional performance. Increased skill effect duration gives you basically more damage. So that is absolutely huge. So if we look at Act 6, this is what would happen. We first take exceptional performance and then the 10% more skill effect duration. And afterwards, we take profane chemistry, just some extra defenses. And it's also really cozy to get that one charge of your life flask back, even if you don't kill enemies. Once again, reminder that at this point, your armor on your helmet should still be higher than your evasion. Maybe just make a mental mark that you have no evasion on your helmet and you just keep something with armor. After Act 6, what we're going to do is actually... Um, I first wanted to go up to Charisma, but it doesn't really make any sense because you can't really reserve anything extra. So I was thinking I personally actually want to go down and focus more on Ballista. This is something that you can decide, but if you follow what I'm doing, then I would definitely recommend that. You also want to take Thick Skin at this point, just because it's a really efficient two-pointer, right? Um, now, one thing I also want to mention is at any point, if you feel like you have a chest that you're going to keep for a while and it doesn't have any life, you can take this master right here, which gives you 15% maximum life if your body armor has no life modifiers. I personally don't like it because I might have to respec it later, which I don't want to deal with, but uh, whatever floats your boat. Now, Act 7, this is a little bit of a contentious one, I guess. Um, I personally want to go down and get this cluster as soon as possible, mainly because I want to get all that good totem juice, the extra totem placement speed, the plus one totem, and more than anything, I also want Ironwood for the plus 30 element resistances. If you don't know, totems um, normally per default have 40% res. With this, they go up to 70, and you also get quite a good amount of plus two armor. Having to constantly resummon your totems during fights gets really annoying really quickly. So while a lot of people will tell you to go upwards first, I personally personally will tell you to go downwards. Uh, take that however you want. You can also do it the other way around. Now, after that, strictly speaking, we're just going into this whole wheel. Uh, now, later we might spec into this totem life, but early we really want the damage and attack speed. We get surveillance, we get panopticon, ironwood, all the good stuff, and obviously golem's blood. After that, we go up to charisma. It's going to be hard to reserve anything else. I guess you can, at this point, probably reactivate skitterbots, try it out with your mana, but even if not, it's just going to give you a lot more comfiness with your mana in general. Uh, so that is all we're going to do in Act 9. So we kind of have this part done, we have this part done. So now we're on our way. I guess I forgot to say this earlier, but Sentinel you should have taken in like Act 4, Act 5. Just a really good one-pointer. And should you ever feel like you run out of life flasks, you can also take another life mastery here uh, for even more charges. Uh, after that, in Act 10, we're going to go more up into the Shadow Area. And this is how it looks like right here. We go from Act 9, Act 10. 
we take all of these points right here. This is actually level 70, which might be a lot higher than some people finish that campaign. But if you're over leveled, so you have all the points that you need, this one is what you take last wasting. Um, you definitely want to get over here as soon as possible, get Hunter's Gambit and get some extra life with Revenge of the Hunted. And yeah, don't forget that I also have other trees after Act 10. I have the starter tree, which is basically up to like level 84. This is going to be like white and yellow maps pushing into red maps. It doesn't have anything with like Cluster Jewel. It's just just a passive tree, basically. Uh, then we have an early game tree, um, which is just, just going to be a little bit further. But let's say you still don't have money for clusters. And then you get into the mid game tree, which is sort of the end point. Now, real quickly here at the end, some uniques that might help you while leveling. Let's say you find a chaos. Maybe one of these is available. Some of these can get pretty expensive. You're definitely not going to get a quill rain for chaos, right? Blood grip might be more expensive. I'm just throwing them in there because these are the most likely candidates. Goldrim, always a superstar because it gives you a ton of elemental resistances. Just know that if you have a Goldrim, you cannot use this monster right here. I mean, if you want Poison Immune, sure, you can still take it, but you're not going to be Bleed Immune. Now, what I usually do with my first Chaos is actually buy a Karui Ward. Uh, it's low level. It gives you strength, projectile damage, projectile speed, movement speed, everything you want. Uh, and it's dirt cheap, usually. Um, Skirmish is an interesting one. It gives you plus one to additional totem. It's a 36 Quiver. Uh, you're probably not going to drop it, but there's a good chance that people are not going to think about it, or maybe it's going to be 3 4 chaos. So you can also purchase that later. It's not that crazy on this build because you will already have a lot of uh, totems, but it's still something to look out for until you have a good endgame quiver. Uh, quiver Rain obviously is your endgame bow for a while. It might even stay your endgame bow if you really like the playstyle, right? Uh, I have no idea. Like, there, there have been times where. Quill Rain has been like 20 plus chaos. It is a very common bow, but if everybody wants it, then yeah, until around about day three, day four, all of them are just going to be bought up, right? So who knows? Blood Grip is a very interesting tech item. It is a level 74 item. I just wanted to put it here to remind you that this could be a really interesting tech item because the life recovery from flasks really, really helps out and just synergizes really well with the Ascendancy. Now, as for Ascendancy, let's quickly talk about the order. So the first one in Act 4, you're going to take, once again, Nature's Reprisal. Unsurprisingly, uh, then we're going to take Nature's Adrenaline. Now, this note is not that crazy, right? You don't have to take it immediately, but it's going to make your Quicksilver a lot more efficient. So that's nice to have. And then before maps at roundabout level, I don't know, uh, 68-ish, you definitely want that Master Surgeon. This is going to carry you through maps because uh, if you have an even halfway decent Life Flask, this is going to give you like a thousand plus life region per second. And then once you have Uber Lab, you're going to take the Nature's Boon. This is going to make you a lot faster, going to give you a ton of movement. But yeah, that's basically all I wanted to cover. Everything will be linked down below in the description. Uh, next up is going to be Endgame. That is the only thing that's left. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you have a good leak start, good leveling section. And um, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.